to you this morning? Go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. We're going to read a couple of verses there, the 16th and 17th verses, as a matter of fact. We began our school year this year, and this is the scriptures that Brother Isaac and Sister Hannah were reading the first week or two. And uh, those are the scriptures we're going to read this morning. <clears throat> We've talked along these lines before. So some of the things that you hear, those of you here today, this morning, have heard before, but many out there, you know, and you may sit there this morning, you might think, well, I already know this, yeah, but there's a multitude, a countless number as far as we go, anyway, God knows how many there are, like Brother Slee said this morning, but there's a multitude of people who do not know this truth this morning, right. and this is one of the reasons that the spirit of deception is so strong in the land today. Amen. This is one of the ways that the enemy deceives <coughs> so many people into believing a lie and being damned exactly. this morning. I want to talk this morning for a few minutes. I want to talk to you about something that I heard on the radio. It's been several days ago now, but before I get to that, before I really get to the main subject this morning, we want to look at some scriptures that confirm the authority of the Word of God as being the final authority. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says this, and you probably know it by heart, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and that there means that it's divinely breathed. Amen. That means that it came from the mouth of God. Yes, Amen. Sir. It's God-breathed. Amen. Pick it up, it says, And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction. Oh, I'm sorry, for correction. Then for instruction. In righteousness, verse 17 says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Let's read it again. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, yeah. that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All Scripture is God-breathed. Yes. Not just part of the book, but all of the book. Amen. Every bit of it is God-inspired, God-breathed, anointed by the Holy Spirit. Right. Jesus would put it this way in Matthew 5 and 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot... Or one tittle yeah. shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now that phrase, one jot there, you know what that means? That means right down to the very dot over the top of the smaller case I. Amen? Every dot, every comma, every period, every word, every and, every the, every but, every bit of it, all inspired, God breathed. Yes. Amen? Come on. All inspired. Every period. Every comma. Psalms 119 and 160 says, Thy word is true yeah. from the beginning. Right. And every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Amen. Martin Luther would make this statement. Very simple, but right to the point. Thy word is nothing but truth. Thy word <laughs> is nothing but truth. We learn from the psalmist that it was true in the beginning. Yeah. It will be true forever. Amen. We're talking this morning about the authority of the Word of God. Yes, sir. The Word of God is the final authority. It is God-breathed. It is inspired. Come on. It is undefiled. It Come never on. changes. It is always the same. God doesn't yeah. say, oops, I made a mistake. I'm going to do a rewrite. Yeah. God does not... Revise Come on. His Word. Come on, brother. Man revises. Yes. Man changes. Amen. But God's Word is always the same, never changes, and it is the final authority. Absolutely. 2 Peter 1 and 19. Come on. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures there. 2 Peter, the first chapter, the 19th verse. What are we talking about? We're talking about the authority of the Word of God. Yes. Say, Brother Billy, I thought you were going to talk about a radio program you heard. I'm going to, but I want to give you these scriptures first. 
The authority of the Word of God. See, all of this was stirred up in me afresh and anew from some emails that I received from someone who used to be a supporter of this ministry. <clears throat> used to be a friend to this ministry until I preached something he didn't like. Mm. Vowed to send an offering every month till he died. Mm. till I preached something he didn't like. Sent me some emails and wanted me to tune into a radio broadcast that he was doing and I did. And ever since this is ever since then, this has weighed heavy on my spirit. Peter said in 2 Peter 1 and 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Now Peter's saying you do well if you take heed to the word of God. Amen. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Talking about what? The word of God. David would put it this way in Psalms 119.105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. <coughs> Peter says you would do well to take heed to the Word of God as unto a light that shineth in a dark place right. until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Amen. 2 Peter 1 and 21, just a couple of verses down, says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, He's still talking about Scripture. <clears throat> but holy men of God spake as they were moved on, yeah. moved by the Holy Ghost. Now what do we say? All Scripture is given how? By inspiration of God. And Peter says here that Scripture came how, Brother David? God spake. Holy men of God spake as they were moved upon by what? The Holy Ghost. God inspired. God breathed. And let me make this statement this morning. I don't want to offend your, uh, your, the way you feel about yourself this morning. But let me make this statement this morning. That God, what God breathed, that trumps everything that comes out of your mouth. Right. Amen? Doesn't matter what you say. If it goes contrary to the Word of God, you're wrong. Right. I, I, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. You know your your self esteem this morning. Yeah. Or maybe I do. I kind of like to poke a hole in that balloon. Amen. Huh. Uh, the, the the new age preacher is always trying to get us to feel good about self. Amen. Yeah. You don't need to feel good about self. That's self right. stinks. Self will take you to hell. Amen. Huh. So I kind of like to poke a hole in the balloon of self esteem and let some of the air out of your cells this morning. Amen. God breathed trumps what man breathes. Yes, sir. What God said trumps what man says. All right. Now is there power in your words this morning? Certainly there is to a certain extent. Right. <clears throat> there is a certain truth this morning, Brother David, in the fact that if you speak positively, yes. it certainly makes you feel better. Right. You don't feel as bad and you, 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 will, you will have a more positive outlook than if you sit around and, oh man, yeah. uh, it's terrible, it's awful, it ain't never going to get no better. No. Amen. Passionate. So speaking negatively does affect you, but right. you do not. Oh, and I can feel some people going to cringe on this one. You do not have the same authoritative power in your word as God does in His. Amen. Here's a big surprise for you this morning. You ain't God. Absolutely. Amen. When God said, let there be light, I challenge you this morning. <laughs> yeah. If you believe that you have the same creative power in your, in your voice, in your word this morning, as God does. Mm -hmm. After we leave out of here this morning, we'll turn off all the lights. Uh -huh. You can sit here on this pew and you can say, let there be light till you're blue in the face and it ain't going to happen. All right. Because you ain't God. Amen. Amen. True. God has a, the final authoritative power in His words and you don't. Yes, sir. Remember what He said, take heed. You would do well to take heed Amen. to the Word of God. Right. Jesus would warn them in Matthew 24 and 4, Take heed that no man deceive you. How do men deceive others? They deceive others by how? Their words. words. Amen? Once again, Jesus would state in Matthew 24 and 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Isaiah 40 and 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the Word of our God shall stand forever. God's Word is not outdated. 
God's word is not does not change. It does not change. That's right. God's word does not need man. Amen. But man needs God's word. Amen. Man needs God's word. Amen. You see, God without you, He's still God. Still God. <laughs> but man without God is nothing. That's right, brother. Amen. Say it. You without Him is nothing. Come on. You have to have Him. Right. God's word doesn't need you to fix it. Amen. You need God's word to fix you. That's right. Amen. Yeah, there you go. You need God. You, see, you don't need to. You don't need to straighten up and fix and correct God's word. You need God's word to straighten up, fix, and correct on, you. Brother. Amen. On, God's word is the final authoritative answer. Yes. Amen. 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 And it will never pass away. We've seen how that it will not change. It's always the same. Right. It's from the beginning. It will be in the end. Amen. Come on. Matthew 4 and 4, Jesus speaking to the devil in the wilderness said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. What are we talking about? All Scripture is what? It yeah. is given by inspiration of God. What's that mean? It means that it's God breathed. It comes from God's mouth. Right. Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now if you wonder why we only use the King James Bible... That's the only scripture I should have to give you. Yep. He said, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So in knowing that there is life to be found in every word, why in the world would I want anything less than the closest thing that we have to the original wow. transcript, to the original scripts that it was written upon? Wow. Why would I want anything else? Any farther away you get from the original, the less life you have. Yes, sir. And if I'm going to have to live by every word, that proceeded out of the mouth of God, then I'm going to have to know what those words are. Yes, sir. In order for me to be able to live what God wants me to live, I've got to know what Amen. God wants me to live. Come on, breathe. And that's the only scripture I should have to give you. Right. How protective is God of His Word? Well, God is so protective of it that Psalms 12 and 6 said that the words of the Lord are pure words. Yeah. As silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Come on. It says, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation yeah. forever. So we see then that God's Word is not only the final authority, but it is preserved. It does not change. It is yeah. the same. Right. It was in the beginning. It will be in the end. What did John write in the first chapter? I don't have this scripture wrote down, but it says, in the beginning was God. Amen? What does it say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Right. So the Word is the same, always has been, does not change. How protective of God's Word is He? Go over to Revelation, the 22nd chapter, the 18th verse. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. That sounds pretty protective to me. Amen. That sounds to me like God's pretty picky. Yes, sir. Oh, Pastor, why are you so picky about what Bible you use? Amen. God's pretty picky Amen. about his word. Amen. Yes, sir. He doesn't want man adding to it. Right. He doesn't want man taking away from it. Oh. As a matter of fact, there are dire circumstances that come along with it if you decide to do that. Come on, preach. God's Word is the final authority. Yes, sir. Amen. Exactly. I found this interesting. As I was doing, as I was studying this, 2,500 prophecies can be found in the Bible. And over 2,000 of them have already been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I found this is what someone wrote. I'm not, I didn't count them up myself, so don't write me, please. I, I had somebody write me one time and said, oh, you said it was, I don't remember what I said, whether I said it was 111 times, and they said, oh, no, you're wrong. It's 100 and whatever. This is a ballpark figure. But someone stated that there were 333 Old Testament prophecies regarding the Messiah to come and that Jesus fulfilled every one of them. 
Now, you might be able to sit back and think, well, if Jesus fulfilled, you know, two or three or a handful, that's possible. Do you want to know what the statistic, what the statistical possibilities are today for one man to fulfill all of those prophecies? You want to know what the odds are? There is none. It's impossible. Unless it's ordained of God. Unless He was indeed the Messiah. Amen. The odds for a man who was not the Messiah to fulfill those things is impossible. Amen. God's Word is true. Yes. Every shovel of dirt that an archaeologist... Oh, I said it that time, Brother Tyler. I couldn't say it this week during school. Every shovel of dirt that they turned over to try and prove the Bible wrong has never happened. Right. It's never worked. Amen? Wow. Because God's Word is true. Right. God's Word is the final authority. Amen. God's Word has been proven over and over again. Not one shovel of dirt has proven God's Word wrong. So once again, God's Word is inspired. Amen. It is unchanging. Right. It is infallible. Exactly. Brother Sleece, and it is the final authority on all things. Now back to the Absolutely. emails and the radio program. And the era, I'm not trying to single out just these people. I'm not even going to tell you their name. The era that these people have fallen into is not a strange thing. It's not an odd thing. It's something that's, that grieves my spirit to have to say today that it's all too common in the day that we live. Yeah. And there is more and more of this going on. Right. And the closer we get to the end, I'm sure the more of it we're going to see. Amen. The more man substitutes mm -hmm. man-breathed word for God-breathed word, the more we're going to see this. Yeah. Say, Brother Billy, what are you talking about? I'm talking about stating your vision, your dream, your revelation as truth, even though it goes contrary to what God's word says. Daniel Webster, who lived from 1782 to 1852, said this, If truth be not diffused, error will be. Now what's that mean, Brother Billy? It means that truth will expose error. All right. If you do not dethrone the truth, then error will be dethroned. If God and His Word are not known and received, the devil and his works will be. Amen. If the evangelical volume, he was talking about the Word of God, the Bible, if the Bible does not reach every person, the pages of corrupt literature certainly will. Come on. If the power of the Gospel is not felt throughout the length and the breadth of this land, yeah. corruption and darkness will reign. Amen. Tell it. If truth is not known, then deception will be. Yes, sir. You got it. If we do not take the truth to the world, then you can rest assured the devil will take the lie. Amen. As I sat there listening to the radio program that this man and several others, I didn't know there was many of them there was, but there's several of them that's doing this thing. Up there, I mean, in this specific area. Mm. As he went on and on about the dreams that they had had, the visions that they had had. Oh. The experiences that they had had. Him and some of the other people that's working with them. And stating these visions and these dreams as fact. Even though 99% of what he said went against the Word of God. Simply because he had a dream. Mm. Must have been from God. Mm. He had a vision. Must have been from God. He had a revelation, and when he had this revelation, he had goosebumps. Mm. He just couldn't believe what he was seeing, so it must have been for God, from God, even though 99% of what he was saying went against God's Word. Mm. Let me make this statement today. <coughs> if you're listening to us over the internet, if you're listening to us over the radio, if you're watching by way of YouTube, or if you're listening by CD or tape, however it is that you're listening to us, if you've never heard anything else that this preacher has said. And I've preached, I've been preaching for 26 years and I've preached thousands of messages and I'm sure many of you in here, some of you out there have heard me preach dozens and dozens if not hundreds of messages. And I've said a lot of things that I believe were important for you to hear. 
But Brother Dave, if you don't never if you have never heard anything else that this preacher had to say, listen to this this morning. No matter your dream, no matter the vision, no matter the revelation, if it does not line up with the Word of God, it is not from God. Amen. Amen? True. It is not from God. Yes, sir. God has never, He will never contradict or go against His Word. Amen. God doesn't change His mind and say, Oh, my Word's wrong and you're right. Amen. God's Word is inspired. It is God-breathed. Yours is yes, not. Sir. You cannot come along with some new revelation that trumps God's Word. No! i got news for you. God's Word trumps anything you can ever think about. Yeah. Anything you ever dream. Anything you ever have a vision of. Come on, God's Word will have the final say. Exactly. Now, does God give dreams and visions? Certainly. Yes. We see clearly throughout the entirety of the Word of God <clears throat> how that God came to men in visions. Mom. And dreams. Yeah. And he showed them things that were happening, judgment that was to come, the future. Yes. He revealed things to people by dreams. And this is not something that was just in the Old Testament and has been done away with, Brother Sleeves. Yeah. Brother David, the Bible says concerning the last days, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mom. And your young men shall see visions yeah. and your old men shall dream, shall dream dreams. Come on, say it. Amen? So there is no doubt that the Lord uses. He has used dreams in the past. He will use dreams in the future. Right. He has used visions in the past. He will use visions in the future. Right. There is no doubt that God uses those things. And please, don't get me wrong. I'm not standing up here today claiming to be some kind of an expert on dreams. My name is not Joseph. Amen? Oh. So don't run to me with your dreams and ask me, are they of God? But I can tell you this undisputable fact this morning. If your dream, if your vision, if your revelation, if your experience yeah. goes against what you find in the pages of God's Word, it is not of God. Amen. It is not Absolutely. of God. You're correct. Well, God uses dreams. He uses visions. Yeah. And these people, they built it. They've got a whole following. Amen. I don't know how many people follow them. Yeah. They've got a whole following of people who just simply take their dreams and their visions as fact. Oh, brother, so and so seen a dream. He, he seen a vision. He had a dream. Tell us about it. Well, I was I dreamt that I was I was in the third heaven. Yeah. And Mary was there, and she was the queen of heaven. Mm. And all these this here was happening, and I saw this, and certain people couldn't get to where God was at because they weren't holy enough yet. All right. Some people didn't know enough, so they were being sent to. The, the uh, heavenly university. I ain't making this up. This is some stuff that I heard them say. None of which can be found in God's Word. None of which can be found in God's Word. It never says one time that when we get there, well, some people's going to be holy enough to go into the presence of God, and some people ain't. They're still going to have to work on their stuff. This man had the audacity. Maybe I shouldn't put it like that because he's deceived and think that he's just doing it and don't know better. Right. This man sent me an email. Whenever I requested prayer, I'd send out some <laughs> prayer requests for Reese's leg that she'd been having so much trouble with. And Brother Wayne down there in Missouri sent it on to some people on his mailing list. And I received an email from this man that I'm talking about. And he said, we need to fall down on our face and thank God yeah. for this suffering. And listen, I do believe that we should give God praise and glory and thanks in all things. Amen. And all things will work together for our good. But he didn't stop there. He said, because the suffering you do in this life is how you pay for your sins. If you do not suffer enough in this life to pay for your own sins, then when you get over there, you've still got to suffer. You've got to work. Maybe a thousand years, maybe two thousand years, hard labor to pay for your sins. People taking that as gospel, Brother Sleece, and that ain't God's Word. Amen. And the whole time I'm sitting there listening to this crazy, out of left field stuff, mm -hmm. I would not have known that it wasn't of God had I not known the Word. Alright. That's why we got so much foolishness being taught in the big churches around America today Amen. is because the people in the pew don't know the Word of God. Right. 
So they take for gospel, they take it for gold. What the pastor said. Amen. What the preacher said. Right. What the evangelist said. Instead of taking, you see, this must be our ruler today. Right. That which we measure everything by. Yes, sir. And if your dream, if you measure your dream mm. with this, and it falls short, Mama, your dream mm. must have been something you ate before you went to sleep. Oh. Or from the devil. Because it was not from God. This must be our scales, our balance this morning. Exactly. And brother Dave, if you weigh everything you hear, yeah. everything you see, Come on. your revelation, your dream, your vision, whatever your experience, right. if you weigh it with this and it is found wanting, right. it is not of God. Exactly. This must be the final litmus test. Amen. This must be the proving ground Amen. for every vision you have. Right. Every dream that you have. There was a traveling preacher that came through Brother Hinton's years and years ago. He said many times people have soup bean dreams and buttermilk visions. And they think it's God. Yeah. And I, I could probably say without contradiction this morning that everyone in here, many of you out there listening, at one time or another have had a dream. Probably more than one time, and it's left you thinking, I wonder, I wonder if this would mean something. How many of you ever thought that? Amen. You had a dream and you you was, what's it mean? Yes, what could sir. it mean something? Is there something to this? Right. Is this from God? Well, like I said, I don't claim to be an expert this morning, but I can tell you this much about your dream, about your vision. If you compare it to God's word and it contradicts God's word, it is not of God. I don't know if it's something you ate. I don't know if the devil visited you while you was asleep. But God was not in it. If it goes against His Word, it is not Amen. of God. God's Word is the final authority. And I know that you're sitting here this morning. You're out there, many Christians out there, and you're thinking, I already know this. Well, thank God that you do because a lot of people don't. That's right, I'm convinced this morning, as I sit at my desk and as God led me to go this direction, as I begin to prepare these notes, I'm convinced this morning that if more Christians, more born-again believers, if just more people in general would use this as the final authority, yeah, if they would measure everything that they hear, every sermon that they hear, every revelation that their pastor has, I'm convinced this morning that there would not be enough people left in mega churches in America today for that church to be called a mega church anymore. Amen? It would not have enough people left in it because they would find out, hey, you know what? What our pastor's preaching, I can't find that in the book. And if I can't find that in the book, then I'm not going to follow that because it falls short of what God said. I'm convinced this morning if we had enough people that would use this as the yard stick. If we had enough people that would use this, Brother David, as the scales this morning to weigh everything with, I'm convinced that there is some Christian television networks that would no longer have enough supporters to be able to stay on the air because they would think, wait a minute, that is not of God. Yes. Amen? Amen. You see, I, I don't know how to put this delicately enough. Hallelujah. I was saved when I was five years old. I've heard a lot of sermons. A lot of preachers. All right. I was told for years mm -hmm. that if I heard something come from the pulpit, mm -hmm. and this, there's a grain of truth in this. I don't mean to discard this altogether. If I hear something from the pulpit and I don't understand it, just put it on the shelf. Yeah. Amen? That's it. Well, my shelf got full, I guess. <laughs> it wasn't that I read something out of God's Word and didn't understand it. Because that happens. Amen. I don't understand everything in God's Word. And if I read something in God's Word and I don't understand it, then I'm certainly not going to toss it to the side. That is something I'm certainly going to say, well, Lord, I don't get it yet, but you will reveal it to me sooner or later. Amen. Amen? True. But, when you begin to preach to me things that you have no Scripture to back up, I refuse to let that sit on my shelf. Amen. I had to clean myself off, Brother Rodney. True. Because there wasn't enough Scripture to back up some of the things I was hearing taught. Amen. And if I'm wrong, please pray for me. Yeah. But I refuse to accept it if you can't back it up with the book. Amen. I refuse to accept it if it falls short of truth. Coming to me and saying, Sister so-and-so said it ain't enough for me. Coming to me and saying that brother so-and-so said it ain't enough for me, brother Sleeze. 
coming to me and saying the Pope said it sure ain't enough for me. Amen? You're going to have to give me some scripture to back it up. Yes, sir. And for sure, if it goes against what God's Word Amen. says, you might as well be talking to the wall. Amen. Exactly. <laughs> because this is the proven ground. Yes. This is what we should measure all. And if we did, Amen. all you're talking about dethroning yeah. the spirit of deception uh -huh. that has moved into churches. Right. And we've had big name preachers. Listen to me. Amen. We've had big name preachers, Brother Dave, right. stand in pulpits Amen. and tell the people their revelation, yeah. their dream, right. their vision. Come on. And it went completely contrary to the Word of God, but the people sat there with mouth open wow. like little birdies waiting on a worm yeah. and ate up everything the preacher said simply because it was Brother so and so. Exactly. I told you, if your dream goes against God's Word, it ain't of God. Amen. If your vision goes against God's Word, it ain't of God. Amen. But let me tell you this, if your favorite preacher goes against God's Word, it ain't of God. Right. I'm convinced this morning that if we had more people that would compare what the preacher says and what the prophet says to the Word of God, we wouldn't have people selling everything that they have because the world's supposed to end or the rapture's going to take place on a certain day and when it don't, they go out and commit suicide. We wouldn't have people following those nuts because they would know what the Word of God says. Come on, praise no man knows the hour or the day mm -hmm. that the Lord will return. The Lord will return. That's it, brother. Amen. Amen. That's good. This is the proving ground. Yes, sir. I want to leave you with these scriptures this morning, Praise written God. by the Apostle Paul, uh -huh. and this certainly drives home the truth that the Lord is speaking to us today. Yeah. Galatians one, eight and nine. Write this down, or turn over there too if you want to. I'll wait till you get there. Galatians 1, 8 and 9. You've heard this before. The Apostle Paul speaking. Galatians 1, the 8th eighth, the eighth verse says, But though we are an angel from heaven, All right. preach any other gospel unto you than that, we, than that which we have preached unto you, yes, sir. let him be accursed. accursed. Come on, brother. As we said before, so say I now again. You see, Paul didn't care to preach the same thing twice. Right. He knew most of us needed to hear it more than once. Amen. Some of us need to hear it more than that. Yes, sir. Somebody said one time you have to hear something seven times before it goes into your long-term yeah. memory. All right. As we said before, so say I now again. Uh -huh. If any man preach another gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. Yes, sir. If anyone goes against God's inspired word, uh -huh. let him be accursed. Amen. If your dream goes against God's word, your dream is accursed. Amen. If your vision goes against God's word, mm -hmm. let your vision be accursed. If any man's revelation, I don't care if he got it in his basement, I don't care if he got it out on the backside of the desert, if it goes against God's Word, it is not of God. Amen. If it falls short of God's Word, it must be refused. This is the balance scales. Anything weighed with it and found wanting must be rejected. The only way to endure to the end, the only way not to be deceived is to compare everything you hear, everything you see, everything you dream, Everything you feel with the Word of God. Amen. It must be Absolutely. the ruler that we measure everything else by. Yes, sir. The only thing. The only thing, Brother David said. And if this is done, we won't be people that are tossed about by any wind of doctrine that comes Come along. Paul said in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of man, yeah. with cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, is even Christ. Yes, sir. Take heed that no man deceive you. All right. Make sure the message that you're following. And we've got so many people out there that call what they're in the message. I've heard that so many times. Some, by, by different people that have a different message. All of them can't be the message. Come on. This is the message. All right. 
This is a KJ. This is King James 1611. Amen. This is the closest thing we have. Even if you talk to the NIV publishers, they'll tell you. Yeah. If you ask them what is the closest as far as literal translation, uh -huh. literal literal translation, word for word, what's the closest? They'll tell you. Right. King James. Amen. Thank God. I heard in I, the NIV editor say that myself on John Ankerberg's program. Oh. When they were asked, which Bible out there mm -hmm. is the closest yeah. thing to, the, to being a word for word Come on, translation? Come on. Say it. They didn't even think about it, Brother David. Right. Brother Sleece, they said, King James. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's the King James? Right. That's the closest thing we have to the original transcripts. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. If it doesn't pass this test, Listen, and the NIV has been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Right. The Message Bible has been weighed in the balance Come and on. found wanting. Come on, tell it. Amen. Every New Age version has been weighed right. in the balance True. and found wanting. If it goes against this book, it ain't of God. Amen. If it goes against His Word, it ain't of God. Come on. No matter the dream, and I say this with no hate, with no anger against those people I love the brother that sent me the emails. It grieved my heart as I sat there and listened and thought, my goodness, what a strong form of deception. <coughs> yeah. But how easily it would be, because as I sat there listening, I thought, if only they would compare their dream to what God has to say. Amen. If only they would compare their vision right. to what God has to say, then they would know whether it was from God. Oh or not they would know whether it was from God or not All right. because God's word is eternal it never changes it is the final authority Amen. it is that which we must measure everything by yes. we must weigh everything by God's word True. God's word talking about the authority of the word of God today All right. my goodness if I, could, if I could tell you anything especially in these last days <clears throat> when things are the way they are yeah. and so many are deceived. Come on. If I could give you some advice, what's going to help you to stand? Mm -hmm. Know God's Word. Yeah. Know God's Word. Don't take the Word of man. Make sure it's in God's Word. Amen. And for sure, if it goes against His Word, it is not of God. No matter who says it, no matter who dreamed it, no matter who saw the vision, right. if it's not in God's Word, if it goes against God's Word, it is not of God. True. Amen. Someone else this morning have something?